Warren is up in the woods right now. I had to grab a couple things for him from the shanty. So gonna head up right now. We're gonna do a little bit of a Q&A today because you guys had some good questions and I want to get them answered for you. If you guys like this video, please be sure to subscribe. And if you wanna try Boxer Maple Syrup, check it out at boxermaple.com. Let's go find Warren. <laughs> Up in the woods now, taking this tool over to Warren and thought I would answer a question on the way. How many taps per acre? So per acre for taps for us personally, we have anywhere from 50 taps per acre to I think one of our woods might have 100 taps per acre. It really just depends on the trees, the density of the woods, how many trees there are, how old the trees are. If they're young, there's quite a few factors that go into it. But I would say on average, it's probably around 50 taps an acre, 50 to 100. It's cold out. Found Warren here. We're gonna ask him some questions. It's pretty chilly today. It's about 25 degrees outside. We got a couple inches of snow last night, which always seems to happen right before it's time to tap is when we usually get the most snow. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get a lot more in the next week or two. What do you think, War? Yeah, I'm sure it'll dump another, at least a foot of snow before we start tapping. But then again, it's supposed to warm up to like 48 degrees in the next day or two. So I guess a couple inches of snow we got right now will probably just melt. But it'll probably snow while we're tapping. All right, first question. About how many taps do you put on each one inch main line? We're not really aiming for a certain amount of taps per one inch line. It, it all just depends on the layout of the woods. It varies. We have, I mean, as little as say 25 taps on a one inch line, just a real short line if we got a, look actually right here, there's a section right below us. You can see we got our vacuum pump house a hundred feet that way, but then we got a roadway that comes up through here and I want to keep the roadway open all the way to the top of the woods. So in order to do that, I got to run another one inch main line about 200 feet long from the vacuum pump house on the left side of the driveway just to catch these few trees. It's probably like 30 trees. But the maximum amount of trees is like 700 on one of our lines. Usually, I mean, we have a couple lines that are like 1500 feet to 2000 feet long but the most those lines have are like three to 400 taps on a one inch main line. I mean, we don't have any woods that are long enough to actually get that many taps on just one line. Cause you run your one inch lines every like 75 feet. So you're just not gonna have that many taps on one. Cause we want our one inch main lines no more than a hundred feet apart. We shoot for 75 feet, that way you use less 5 16 line and you get straighter runs. And then that way you only get about five taps on each 5 16 line. If your main lines are 150 feet apart, by the time you just walking in a straight line, by the time you get to the next line, you could have 10 to 15 taps on just one 5 16 line just because they're way too far apart. And it makes it way easier for tapping. You feel like you're getting, getting something done when there's less taps on the line. Do you take your lines down every year? No, we don't take our lines down every year. So the lines that you see behind us, all this tubing, actually stays up pretty much all the time. And we usually don't have too many issues with it. Once we start making syrup, we're walking, checking for leaks constantly. And in the off season, we're always walking the woods, removing any downed trees, brush, fixing any major problems. 
or I should say trying to fix all the problems before we get all the snowfall and before the season really gets going. The main lines will stay up for 20 years and pretty much same with the 5 16 This woods we're walking in right now, these 5 16 lines were up for 21 years. And we just ripped them all down and replaced it all. And the main lines were the same age. So the, we replace the drop lines about every five years. So that gives you a good chance to replace all the T fittings and it, you get rid of a lot of micro leaks when you replace the drop lines. So it kind of prolongs the life of your lateral 5 16 lines. Well, there's snow outside. Yes, that's when you should be tapping, when everything's frozen, frozen solid. When it's 20 degrees outside, that's when we start tapping all our trees. So just like it is now, it's perfect weather to tap, but it's going to warm up in a couple of days. So we want to skip that warm spell because we want everything tapped in time. You don't want to be tapping trees and half of your woods are running sap because then you got to stop tapping and go fix leaks. And then you get small batches of sap and it just turns into a headache. The ideal time to tap is when mother nature says so. <laughs> And you got to watch the weather. When you start seeing freeze thaw cycles in the 10 day forecast, you better start thinking about tapping. So we like to see it frozen for like 10 days. And then on the 10th day, if it shows like 40 degrees, we know we better start tapping. So one of the questions we got asked is if we plant maple trees and, oh, okay, <laughs> struggle, struggling right now, is if we plant maple trees and we do not, they grow naturally where we are. So we don't have to plant them. The only times we do plant them is pretty much in our yards if we want to have some out in the front yard. But other than that, in the woods themselves, they just, they grow naturally. Yeah, we don't need to plant maple trees. Um, they just naturally grow. They're growing everywhere. Every, every single woods around here has maple trees. And for the most part, the woods is mostly maple. Like every woods we have is at least 50% maples or more. The newest woods we just got is about 95% maples. And the woods we're in right now is like 90% maples. I mean, the only place you would plant that I would plant a maple tree is in an open field because you're not going to plant maple trees in the woods. There's already way too many little maple saplings popping up that all these saplings will just keep dying off anyways because there's already big maple trees crowding the area. So if I cut one tree down in the woods, People say, oh my God, you're cutting down a tree. But in the woods, it means nothing because there's always 50 more little trees to take its place. They're, the little trees just keep on dying. It's an endless cycle. They just keep on dying until one of the big ones dies. And then the little one starts growing real fast and takes its place. So last week, we, I, cut this wet and dry, I cut this dry line and it sprung apart too far to get it back together. Um, so I got this tool that I use to suck it back together. Just gotta loosen it up so I can clamp onto it. This is a homemade tool. I made this probably 15 years ago. It's a little heavy. It's a lot heavier than the ones you can buy from a dealer. But it gets the job done. Should have brought my impact gun. Usually I just put an impact on this and I just run it together really quick. It sucked apart a lot further since we left. Before it was only like two inches apart. Now it's a foot apart. Hopefully it goes together. I 
I'm just gonna slide that down so we can get it further away from the clamps. Okay, I'm done. We gotta do the one up there and then walk back down and connect that line in. So this is a wet and dry line. Uh, this blue one on the bottom is the wet line. This one's called the dry line. Um, this is just a one inch line that the trees are, five sixteenth lines are wrapping around the trees and coming back into this one inch line. And this actually connects back into the wet and dry down the hill. But so the wet line, the sap runs down the wet line and the vacuum is in the dry line. So you'll have vacuum and sap in the wet line and then just vacuum in the dry line. So the one inch line right here connects into this wet line and then this loop supplies vacuum to that one inch line. That way it just keeps the sap from cutting off the vacuum to each one inch line. Because the closer you get to the pump house, the fuller this line gets. And eventually, if this line is completely full, which it will be during the real big runs, this line will be full of sap. And you'll have a full inch and a half pipe going into the releaser. So that way, when this is full, no vacuum can get through here. So it has to get supplied vacuum through this dry line. I use black for the dry line. That way, if the wet line is full of sap and it freezes at night, this dry line will still be empty. So in the morning when it starts to warm up again, if this wet line's still frozen, the sap has somewhere to go and it'll go down the dry line instead. Because this black line will thaw out a lot faster than the wet line. So the reason they're both not black is black pipe is a lot hotter. So the hotter the sap is, the faster bacteria starts to grow. So you blue pipe stays a lot cooler. And you make better flavored syrup that way. So yeah, when everything is working properly, this line will be dry. There'll be no sap in it. So it won't matter how warm this one gets. There's no sap in it. We have a one inch ball valve at every one inch line throughout the woods. So when we're checking for vacuum leaks, we can come through. Normally it'll be open, the vacuum will be on. We'll walk up to it, close it for like 30 seconds and wait 30 seconds to open it back up. And if you hear even the slightest air leak going through it, you know there's a vacuum leak down this line. If you hear absolutely nothing, you know it's good, you just keep on walking to the next one. So we had a spin seal rip out of here. And you can see there's a big hole. You can't put a new spin seal back into this pipe. So all we do to fix the problem is you just put a saddle over its place. And plug the saddle off. And then we just put wire ties around it so it can't go anywhere. Put one more wire tie around this clamp on the bottom so that can't spring apart. So when a spin seal rips all the main line, that's our fix.
taps are good for as long as the weather keeps freezing at night and thawing out during the day. We've had a season as short as 10 days, so the taps only lasted 10 days. And we've had seasons last two months, two, three months. Like we've made syrup beginning of January and it's lasted all the way to the end of April before. But it all depends on if the weather keeps freezing. If it stops freezing, it's over. Well, I'm gonna wanna cut it like right here. Didn't go as far as I thought it would. Cut a wee bit more out. That one's good. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you like this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, all the things. If you guys like this style of Q&A, please let us know and ask some more questions below because it was fun and we'll do some more videos like this. We'll see you next time.